In this video, I'm going to talk about patterns involving prime factoring. One of the first patterns is one where you have a number that ends in a lot of zeros. So let's look at this question. A and B are positive integers such that A times B equals 10,000, where neither an A nor B contain any zeros. Find A and B where A is less than B. Okay, so that's the question. What does that mean is the first thing that you're probably thinking. How do I interpret that? Basically, it means that you've got two numbers, A and B. If you multiply them together, they're going to equal 10,000. But the key is that neither A nor B can have a zero in it, can end in a zero. So what are those two numbers? If you had taken these two numbers, you can think about this in many ways. First of all, you can do the factors. Well, you could do a set of factors in, in pairs. You could do 1 and 10,000. The second one would be 2 and 5,000. Then 3 won't fit in there, but 4 and, and 2,500. And you can keep going. Um, but notice these all have zeros in them. So it makes it a little difficult. You can't use these numbers. So let's look at a different way, and it is prime factoring. You know that 10,000 is the same as saying 2 to the 4th times 5 to the 4th. And that I know because every time I have a 2 times 5, I'm going to get a 10. So this has one zero in it. If you had two squared times five squared, that would have two zeros in it. Three squared times five, um, sorry, two cubed times five cubed would have three zeros. And so two to the fourth times five to the fourth has four zeros. So any time you have two times five, you will end up with a zero. So in other words, we have to pick numbers that um, don't have a 2 times a 5 together in them. And each one of these has a 2 times a 5 in it, at least one. So basically then, you'll know that the only numbers that you can join together would be the 2 to the 4th can be joined together as one number, and you can also have 5 to the 4th, and that would be your second number. So as you multiply them together, though, and you include them in a number that's multiplied together, you end up as 0. So, 2 to the 4th, well, you've got 2, 4, 8, 16. That's 2 to the 4th, because you multiply by 2 each time. 5 to the 4th, the powers of 5 are 5, 25, 125, and 6, 25. That's 1, 2, 3, 4. So the numbers, therefore, are 16 and 625. A has to be less than B. So A is 16 and B is 625. All right, let's go to the next type. Again, using prime factors. This time, you've got the exp exponential, or factorial, sorry, the factorial, 52 factorial, is a very large number. How many terminating zeros are at the end of the answer to this factorial? So you still have terminating zeros. On this case, I've written, I started writing it out. I didn't write the whole thing out, but it's basically saying, well, you've got 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 times 47 and so on, all the way down to 1. Now, again, in this case, you want to know how many zeros. So you'll need to find out how many pairs of 2 times 5 you will have, how many of, of that product, how many 2 times 5s you will have. So let's look at this. First of all, you know that 52 will have a 2 in it, at least one if you prime factored it, at least one. It would actually have more than one, but it doesn't have a 5 in it, so you know that you have a 2 here. And what you want to do is try and find out where the 5s are and the 2s are. Oh, 50 will have 5 squared times 2. 49 doesn't. Um, oh, I missed a 48. That should go in here. 48 times 47, because 48 has a 2. 47 doesn't, 46 has a 2, it has no 5. Ah, here, this one has a 5. 5 times 3 squared is in that 45. So basically what I'm showing you here is that there's lots of numbers that have, that have a 2 as one of its factors, but there are fewer numbers 
that have a 5 as a factor. So really, if you want to find out how many pairs of 2 times 5, or, or a product of 2 times 5 there are in here, what you have to do is look for the number of 5s that you could prime factor out. So the number of zeros will be dependent on the number of 5s. So let's figure out how many 5s. If you took 52 and we divide it by that by 5, well right away you can see you have 10. You have a remainder of 2. Um, we, that's just saying that there's an extra 2 here that don't have a 5, like was shown here. So we're not going to include those. But out of those 10, we want to find out how many have a double 5, because we had a 5 squared up here, for example. So we divide by 5 again. That's a 5. 10 divided by 5, and end up with 2. So you have a total of 12. And that would mean that each of those 5s could pair up with a 2, so you get a product of 5 times 2, 12 times, so there's going to be 12 zeros. And that's it.